This video is about resistance and temperature. So we need to look at how temperature affects the resistance in a pure metal. And we need to look at how we can uh, use that to find out the temperature of absolute zero. If you haven't come across this idea of absolute zero before, we'll talk about that a little bit. And we're going to look at the idea of superconductivity. So the first thing we do is a little practical, where you get a um, wire in here, possibly an iron wire, and you connect it to a multimeter to measure its resistance, and you put it into some oil, because if we use water it might change the answer to the resistance of the wire by conducting the electricity itself. And we put that into a water bath to heat it up and cool it down, and we get some data for how the resistance of the wire changes with the temperature. Okay, and what happens is we get a graph that looks something like this, um, where at zero degrees C the wire's got some resistance, so down here the wire has got some resistance, and then it increases linearly with the temperature. So we can work out the equation of this graph, um, which shows us that at any temperature T, then the resistance of the wire is 9.2 plus 0.036 T. Okay, just an example here of the... Um, way we work it out. But this is all done with the temperature in degrees C. So what you might uh, start to realize here is that if we were to extend this graph to the left, so we were to go to negative um, Celsius temperatures, then the resistance would go down and down and down and down and down until eventually we got to the stage where there was no resistance at all. When would this happen? Well, this would happen when there was um, no further temperature decrease we could have. The reason that the wires got resistance in the first place, or at least one model for this, is that the electrons are bumping into the ions which are vibrating. So when the uh, metal's as cold as it can be, the ions won't be vibrating and there'll be no loss of energy for the electrons. Okay, that gives us, if we do the maths on this, a temperature with this data of minus 260 degrees C. Okay, we know that the actual temperature, the coldest that anything can possibly be, is minus 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, and we call that temperature zero Kelvin. Okay, this is not okay. This is zero Kelvin. It's not degrees because it's not a relative scale. Okay, we're starting from an absolute zero, as cold as anything can be. You cannot make something colder than zero Kelvin. So that gives us a way of predicting what the... Um, resistance will be going backwards. So if this is the graph that we've just produced, we can extend that graph to temperatures below zero, and we're expecting the relationship to look something like this. Okay, If we were to move this axis um, over to the left, then from this temperature over here, if we put the axis here, then we could say that was a proportional relationship. The resistance is proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Okay. However, um, this, guy, this guy, Heike Onas, he was the first person to liquefy helium, and he wondered what would happen to metals and the resistance at very, very low temperatures. So in 1911, he cooled mercury down. Okay, obviously, mercury is a solid by the sort of temperatures that he's getting down to. He cooled it down with some liquid helium, and liquid helium is about 4 degrees Celsius above absolute zero, okay, so be careful here, not 4 degrees Celsius, but 4 degrees Celsius above absolute zero. So that's the temperature of minus 269 degrees Celsius, or 4 Kelvin. And what he found was very surprising, okay, so he found out that if we plotted that graph of the Kelvin temperature against resistance, the absolute temperature, okay, the graph went down and down and down and down and down, but then suddenly somewhere around 4 Kelvin, the resistance became zero. Okay, this was obviously a great surprise, um, and this was the discovery of superconductivity. So it's not just that metals get lower and lower resistance as they get colder. Eventually, when they reach a temperature called the critical temperature, all right, the critical temperature, the resistance suddenly drops to zero. Okay, this is a quantum effect, and you'll be glad to know you don't have to understand that yet. Okay, but the electrons can travel through the metal without losing any energy at all. So when you connect a voltmeter across the two ends of a superconductor, it reads zero volts. Okay, and obviously a lot of research was done, and people found um, lots of other metals that had uh, superconductivity at low enough temperatures. And then as time went by, people found higher and higher temperature metals 
until we've got up to the stage where we're at sort of minus 100. I don't know if there's very practical uses for these sort of metals, but there are certainly very practical uses down here. And one example is at the Large Hadron Collider. When it was first built, um, they need 12,500 amps to go around the electromagnets, so you need a very thick wire to actually carry that current. This is the wire that was originally used in the uh, 1980s version of the Large Hadron Collider. When it was redesigned and rebuilt, that entire 12,500 amp current went through the wire that's inside this sleeving here. Okay, Of course, that was great, but you had to cool that down with liquid helium. And the thing that went wrong with the Large Hadron Collider is that one of the uh, parts of the liquid helium leaked. This got to a temperature above 4 Kelvin, stopped being a superconductor, and as soon as it stopped being a superconductor, it generated immense amount of heat, and the whole thing just melted. Okay, but very, very useful on things um, like um, MRI machines in hospitals use superconducting electromagnets because you need to generate very, very strong magnetic fields, so you need to generate very, very strong currents.